In Creo Parametric, you can define the manufacturing model for a sand casting. In the first part of this series, we created our manufacturing model, added the reference model, defined a workpiece, and then applied shrinkage to the reference model. In this video, we're going to create the sand core. The sand core is an insert used to create internal cavities in the reference model. And it's also typically destroyed in the manufacturing process. Let's take a look at where the sand core would go. I'm going to click on the reference model and open it up in its own separate window. And now let's take a look at a cross section of this part. I will go to the view tab. Here we have the section command. Let me try the X direction. Nope, the X direction is wrong. Let me go to the drop down list. Let's try the Y direction. Nope, it's not the Y direction I want. It's the Z direction. And let's show the hatch pattern. Now I'd like to apply a color to the cap section. So you can see where in the middle here that the sand core would end up going. And I'm going to use this cross section a little later. Let's give it a name and then hit the check mark. And it might not be obvious now why I'm going to do this, but I'm going to create a curve using the cross section. Let me go to the datum drop down menu and then choose curve. And then let's go to curve from cross section. And I will use the drop down list to select my newly created cross section and then hit the check mark. And so now I've got a datum curve in the model. And I'm going to use that later on for a sketch that I want to create. Speaking of which, when I created this model, it didn't end up with any different saved views. Let's define one right now using the reorient command. And I will choose to face the top of the screen. Let's choose this surface. And then to face the right side of the screen, I will pick this surface. And let's save this for use later on. I will call it front. And so to define the sand core for this, usually what you'll do is you'll create geometry, like I could create a revolve that would fill in all this area. And it doesn't matter if it intersects with the reference part, because later on I can do a Boolean subtraction of this reference model from whatever sand core that I start off with. But this is really complicated geometry in here. You can see how it moves up and down. So when I go to define my sand core, I'm actually going to use that curve from the cross section in order to help define my sketch. So now that we see what is in the reference model, let me go back to my manufacturing model. There you can see the curve that I just created inside the middle of the workpiece. Now let's go about creating our sand core. And the way that we do that, if you go to the sand core drop down list, you have the ability to mirror an existing sand core, assemble one that already exists, or we can create one right here in the manufacturing model. We get the create component dialog box that opens up. Let me call it my valve sand core and then click the OK button. And this opens up the dialog box and I'm happy using my metric start part. I will click the OK button. And then to locate it in the model, a lot of times you can use the default constraint, but I want to make sure that the orientation of this part matches up with the orientation of the reference model and the pull direction. Let me go to my datum visibility command from the in graphics toolbar to turn on my coordinate system display. And I'm going to pick from the part that I'm assembling in here its default coordinate system. And I want that to line up right with, well, let me actually hide this one first. Let me hide that. And I actually accidentally selected in here. Let me remove it. I want to make sure that I'm getting that coordinate system from the reference model. And I'm just making sure that the Z directions point in the same direction as the pull direction. That is good. Let me hit the check mark. And now I can turn off my coordinate system display. Okay, so for defining my revolve in the sand core, let me just reposition my model. 
and I'm going to turn on my datum planes in a moment. So let me hide some of the ones that I do not need. Let me turn on my datum plane display. And I want to create a revolve inside of my sand core. So I'm going to click on it in the model tree. From the mini toolbar, I can choose to activate it. So any sketches or revolves or other features that I create right now will end up in my sand core part. And so I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to sketch on the datum plane called front. Come here, datum plane. There we go. This datum plane and it is choosing the datum plane called right to face the right side of the screen. And actually, right before I go in here, let me see if I can hide the uh, work piece so that it's not getting in the way of my sketching. Let's hit the sketch button and I will go to my sketch view. So I'm looking right on at the surface. Let me turn off. Actually, I'm going to leave my data planes displayed for a moment so I can actually I have the reference that I need already. Let me turn off my planes and let's see what else do I want to do. Oh, it'll also make it easier if I go to the clip model view so I can see the inside of where I want to create my geometry. All right, so let's see what else do I want in here. Oh, let's put in a center line and I'm choosing the center line from the datum group. I'm going to revolve this sketch later on. So I'm going to put in a center line to act as my axis of revolution. I will right click and then choose designate axis of revolution from the toolbar. I also know that I want some symmetry in there later on for a line that I'm going to sketch. So I'm just going to create a regular sketching center line so it won't actually create a datum axis in my model. And that is good to start off with. Now for the geometry that I want in here, let's use the project command. And that's the same as what used to be called use edge years ago. Let me go to project. Hey, if you are in Creo Parametric 9.0 or later, you have this nice little ribbon tool for selecting your references. And it tells you that you can use the shift key for selecting chains and loops and one by one chains. All right, that's good. Let me just close that little window. And so for my chain that I want, let me select this curve. And then I'm going to use the shift key and grab this little segment over here. And it got the loop I didn't want. And so if you click on this button, you get the chain dialog box. And I do want a partial loop, but I can try using the flip button. Hey, that is what I actually want. So let's click the OK button out of here. And I want to use this project command once more. So rather than just hitting the check mark, I'm going to use this button, which will create the geometry from the selection, but leave this dialog box open so I can select another bunch of curves. Let me select that and then hold down the shift key and grab that. That's good. Let me hit the check mark. And so that's good for some of my geometry. Sorry for zooming in and zooming out like that. Let me now create some lines to finish up my sketch. So I want to close off here to there. And then let's see, I want a line. I'll make it horizontal out here and then down to my axis of revolution and all the way out over here and then back up and then let me close off that. So that's pretty good for my sketch. Let me throw in a symmetric constraint from here to, let's see, this line and, excuse me, that vertex and this vertex over here. Now I only have one dimension I need to define. Let's define this and then I'll middle mouse click to locate the dimension. Wow, it's almost exactly what I want, value of 50. And the reason that I'm extending this sketch for the revolve beyond the internal cavity is that this needs to sit in the core and cavity of my sand casting later on. So everything is good. Let's hit the check mark. And then with the sketch still selected, 
I will use the revolve command. We can see a preview of the geometry that will be created. I like that. Let's hit the check mark out of here. And that looks nice. Okay, so let me now take a look at filling in the other part where the sand core has to go. It has to go from this top surface down to my part, the rest of my sand core insert. So let's create a sketch. I will click on the sketch command once more and I'm going to sketch on this top surface. And let me turn on my datum plane display. I want to make sure that for my references, I am using this datum plane right here in the middle. And I'm picking that just so I get a sketch reference there. And I want that datum plane to face the right side of the screen. And let me hit the sketch button. Let me go to my sketch view. And for this one, let me turn off my datum plane visibility to unclutter the screen a little bit. I'm just going to make an oversized rectangle and then extrude it. And like I mentioned earlier, I can later use a Boolean operation to subtract any geometry from my sand core that is overlapping on my reference part. Let me go to the rectangle dropdown and I will choose to create a center rectangle centered right there. And then we drag it up here and right now. It's just like snapping to too much stuff. So I just exaggerated the size. I can make this dimension smaller. Let's try value 60 and then this dimension. Let me change this to 110. That's good. Just slightly bigger than the opening. So I will hit the check mark. And then let me turn on my datum plane display because I'm going to extrude this in a moment. Let's use the extrude command and it's extruding up. Let me change the direction and I can right click on the depth drag handle and choose to reference. I'll have it go down to the datum plane called top. You can see the preview of the geometry and again, it's overlapping on my model. Hey, that is perfectly fine. So now let's hit the check mark to get out of here. Let's turn off our datum plane display. And for a moment, I'm going to turn off the display of the reference model so you can see what we have starting out. And obviously, that's way too much material uh, for this little, you know, smokestack kind of area. Let's go back and make our reference model visible and then make the workpiece visible and then to subtract out the excess geometry that's in the sand core i'm going to go back to the top level assembly and activate it then if i go to the right side of the model we have this components drop down and then component operations then from here, you can choose Boolean operations. And then at the top, I can choose that I want to do a cut. I want to use one part to remove the material from another part. And the part that I want to modify, well, let me tap the right mouse button so I can get to the sand core and then left click on it. For the components that I want to modify it, well, let me use query select once more to get to my reference part. And we've got update control, a whole bunch of other different options inside of here. Uh, I don't really need to copy any quilts. You can choose whatever other options that you want, but I'm good. Let's click the OK button. And then we can click done return in order to close out of there. And you can see that right now my sand core is perfectly trimmed to the reference model. If you want to test that, you can take the reference model, you can hide it, you can make it visible again, or maybe you can just go to the view tab and then you can select the reference part and you can go to model display, component display style. Maybe I'll set that part to wireframe just so you can see what the sand core looks inside of there. Now, earlier when I created my revolve, I made the revolve go beyond the length of the reference part because it needs to sit in the core and cavity of the sand casting. Well, I'm going to do that same thing for the area up at the top. 
So let's make that extend. To do that, I'm going to go to the sand core part and then activate it. And now let me go to that top surface. I'm going to select it with my left mouse button. And then if I go to my offset command, you can use a command like the area offset to offset it a distance. Now let's use a distance of 30 to offset it and then hit the check mark. And so that is pretty good for my sand core part. I can do a little bit of cleanup of some of my geometry. Let me just hide that curve in the model. And I think if I hide the cutout, that will get rid of the other curve that's visible in there. And let's go to the view manager. And I can go to the, was it the style tab? And if I go back to my master style, it'll bring the reference part back to shaded with edges. So in that way, I have to find my sand core. And in the next video, I will show you how to create other additional features like cuts for your sprues.